What's up, pretty gang? It's your favorite nail tech, Peaches, back with another video. And today, I'm going to show you guys how I got this look. This is actually a freestyle set, and it consists mainly of hand-painted nail art. I do have an in-depth tutorial on how I do these type of flowers, but I wanted to show you anyways, just so you guys get the thought process of how do I think and how do I come up with my freestyles, you know what I'm saying? So before we get into it, I want to make sure you guys check the description for all my coupon codes as well as my Amazon storefront. Follow me on social media and subscribe. Turn on those notifications. Y'all don't want to miss what I got coming next because I have a lot of good videos and good information coming. So first things first, we are using princess slippers, not polished, because y'all already know if it's not not polished, it's not nothing. It's literally the only colors that I use, to be honest with you. Liquid that I use is gonna be Young Nails. I don't use nothing else but Young Nails liquid. And my brush size is a size 20. I do want to mention that the bigger your brush does not mean the flatter the bristles. Someone pointed this out to me in a separate video, just associating the size of my brush with the flatness of the bristles. That's incorrect. Basically, I get my um, brush pinched. If you can see that little notch that's on the silver part of my brush, I get my brushes from the nail supply, real Kalinsky hair and brushes. Mine happens to be Japanese Kalinsky. Um, I don't typically use German Kalinsky just because I buy the same type of brush every single time. This is the length of bristles that I like. And if you're looking for something similar to this, I suggest you visit your local nail supply store and really get familiar with being in nail supply stores and buying things in person because a lot of times when you buy your brush online, you're not able to feel it. You're not able to determine the length of the bristles. You're basically just going off a picture. And like I say, your brush, that's really your bottom bitch. And honestly, if, if, if y'all don't have a good relationship or she's not acting right, I'm sorry, but your results is gonna be probably difficult and they're just it's not gonna be that good okay okay so I'm pretty much speeding through this application because it's really not necessary you guys have seen me do application a million and one times and to be honest with you the background is plain now this particular client I'm gonna let you know right now she got two shorties because you know what I'm saying she's she's into certain activities I don't I'm not, I want this to be monetized so I don't know how far YouTube is gonna let me go but you know what I'm saying she need her fingers for certain stuff that you know you know what I'm talking about. So that's why these two are short. Uh, someone on my Instagram thought like these two fingers was hurt. I was like, no, baby, she not hurt. Okay. She, she's sensual. All right. This, these are her sensual fingers. That's how we're going to say that. So that's why that is. Um, at this particular stage, actually, as soon as she sat down, right? Cause I've had this client before and I was like, Ooh, you want to freestyle? I could freestyle you. Like that's exactly what we're going to do. I have already like I already had an idea in my head basically I've been really wanting to do some hand painted flowers and so when she sat down I was like girl I'm gonna hook you the hell up you don't even know and she was honestly very surprised at how well they came out and I was surprised like the smile that I had on my face during this whole process y'all don't even understand I love doing freestyles and I love doing like throwback nail art because there was a point in time where I could not do no type of nail art, even the lines, the dots, the everything. And I feel like that's just very much my style. So when I get to do sets like these, it just honestly, I'm having fun. Like you can imagine the type of smile I had on my face. And I kept telling her, I'm like, girl, I love these. These are so cute. Like I, I just, yeah, everything about them I like. So at this stage, I'm already knowing I'm doing hand painted nail art. And I was already feeling like, okay, I want to do some Frenchies. But the two short nails, right? I knew that I did not want to do Frenchies on those two short nails because we are limited on space. And now I also knew that I didn't want to do a whole heck of a lot of bling just because, like I said, there's two short nails. And so I kind of didn't want to just like do a specific overload. I'm very anal about like symmetry and stuff like that. So I wanted these two nails to be able to match with the rest of the look without someone noticing like hey those two nails are hella short you see what i'm saying so at this point in time i'm already thinking like okay whatever i do on the two short nails is not going to be french tip so that's what i'm thinking i'm like okay do i want to do french tips on the others and then just leave the short nails for the hand painted art but then i'm like okay i also need to make sure the design is cohesive on the other hand and then on top of that her budget is 150. so basically my freestyle start at 120 and the higher the budget the more the more designs the more things you know or basically even if the design may look simple the amount of time it takes me or like the amount of work that i put in is going to be more basically so even though this is like a fairly simple look this did take 
quite a lot of effort because you have to keep curing in between layers, going back and forth, reshaping, top coating, all of those different types of things. It took roughly, I booked freestyle category for about three hours just to account for length because some people will get like double XL or longer. So I like to make sure I always have enough time. This particular set took about two and a half hours. So it didn't take too long. Um, these are the brushes that I use. This Mia Secret brush I got from my nail supply and it's my cleanup brush. And of course I've been using that blue brush from the Beatles pack that I be getting on Amazon. Normally I use the gold brush, but that one broke and then I got a new pack. And so now I got all these blue brushes floating around. So it's basically use what you're comfortable with. And of course you need a dotting tool. So the color, this color that I'm using for the French tip, honestly, I couldn't even really catch the name, but I do have coupon codes um, down below for LA Nail Reserve. If you guys are interested, the, I basically only exclusively use their colors for nail art because they don't chip. They are very pigmented. I rarely need more than one coat and I really like the formula. So I would not suggest doing the French tip this way though, because the, the way the blue was, it was pretty thick. And so a lot of the um, polish, when I like brushed it on with the brush, it kind of was pulling down to the tip and it was causing like divots. And I ended up on the second coat having to go in and kind of fill those in, which you weren't able to tell at the end of the result because the nail art and stuff like that. But um, yeah, just to let you guys know. So this particular part, I'm just painting on the French tip and I'm pretty much just deciding like how long do I want to go, how narrow, how, you know, you got to kind of figure that out right there. And I'm going to tell you right now, the second hand, I definitely preferred it better. And it usually do be that way because the first hand, you kind of just figuring out so many things that by the time you get to the second hand, you like you're more into it basically your hands are more into it and you kind of realize like oh i actually like how this second hand tapers a little bit more or i actually like how this is a little bit longer so basically i ended up fixing this hand and making it a little bit more elongated and i added a little bit more polish to the sides okay so the, a fun fact she pointed out that this blue actually perfectly matches some of the colored lashes that she has in her set and i thought that was really cute because i didn't even notice but you know y'all know i like little stuff like that so at this point we're gonna draw them on to six out of the ten nails and you will need to cure this for two minutes look if you guys do not cure this first layer all the way it's not gonna work you're also gonna need to top coat if you don't top coat, basically you run the risk of if you try and just paint on top right away, if you use acetone for mistakes and stuff, it may get rid of the polish underneath. So that blue layer will be affected. Okay, so everything is top coated. I apologize, I couldn't get the colors right away. That's my bad. So we're top coated and now I'm just taking this other flat brush and I am making these strokes. Now these are like gel brushes, you can say. For people who like to paint with gel polish or um, you're using it for builder gel and stuff like that i use them for nail art and they're also used for nail art there's different types of gel brushes like this that have um y'all i apologize if you can hear the storm out there it's kind of crazy it's yeah it's, it's getting buck wild out here um so basically i'm just making these flower petals in different directions i just really thought you know i'm really into like spring already i really like hand painted flowers since i figured out i could do this and no one does this anymore and i feel like this is just kind of like it's so cute you know it's very very easy as you can see i'm using just a flat brush okay and i am going in different directions now you're gonna want to cure that for i let it cure the whole time while i do this hand but just know these la nail reserve polishes do cure for two excuse me for two minutes so now for the nails on this side that are longer I'm just doing the same thing except for these flowers are going to take up a little bit more space. I wanted it to look cohesive so I just make sure I place them in a way that's basically going to look nice. And then on the French tip, I wasn't worried about covering up the French tip or anything because you could still see it from underneath. I just really wanted to be able to look like we just pretty much threw flowers at her. You know what I'm saying? So now the second layer, we're going to go ahead with the pink and we're going to do this on top of the orange but we're gonna concentrate the color mostly in the center of the orange petals and I know at first it kind of looks a little questionable and a little crazy but I promise you it's gonna 
it's gonna turn out right okay so if your clients are concerned just tell them like oh it's gonna turn out right this is the type of look that when you do it it's okay if it's a little bit messy because overall it's gonna come together you see what I'm saying so at this point I'm getting excited I already know that I'm gonna use the white to go ahead and make my actual like form the actual highlight for the petal or like the shape for the petal and that you can pretty much do as you please you know so this is where I'm deciding like okay how big do I want to make those the white outlines how small do I want to you know I'm kind of thinking about that as I'm going and this is actually sped up by the way because it does take a, it as quick as it is it does take a little second to just make sure that everything is cool like I said if you don't cure before layers at least a little bit it's not gonna work and you have to cure your base layer like that blue French if you're gonna draw on French you have to cure that before you go and you have to top coat it or you will not be able to draw this smoothly so at this point I'm going ahead and I'm drawing on the outline of the flower petals and I decide to go ahead and do it thickly with white and in the middle I do a couple of line strokes because I feel like it just gives more highlight basically so that these really look like flowers you know I feel like it always looks a little funny at first and then when you just do like the little white lining or highlighting it just looks so much better so honestly you can do this a million and one ways do as you see fit there's honestly no real wrong way to this uh, in the past I have done these flowers a little bit more open I've done the highlighting in the middle a little differently so have fun with it you guys like there's no right or wrong with this I thoroughly enjoyed this I thoroughly enjoyed how it came together the only thing I would say is I wanted to make sure that all the petals were like the same type of shape as well as the same thickness if that makes sense with this white since I started out with thick petals I wanted to make sure that they're all outlined in a thick format and so that's pretty much how we got to there so at this point I'm already thinking like okay I know I typically do dotting with when I do my hand-drawn um, flowers so I'm thinking like where do I want this at you know I don't want the French tip to be completely covered up but I also want to incorporate that element I'm thinking okay what about bling I do want a little bit of bling so how can we do this right so at this point I'm thinking like okay well I want to make sure that I have the look that I'm going for right because it's white it just makes everything pop it, it, it throws it together it brings it together so then that's when I get to thinking I want some extra I don't even want to call them petals but like I want some extra lining coming out of these flowers just to kind of create a more flowy type of look is basically what that is so I pretty much cured them you did the other hand I came back now the, the these white lines that I'm about to show you they're kind of hard to see but you can see like watch I'm gonna do one right now so you see how I just kind of like have these little white lines coming out from the flower kind of like vines in a way so I really kind of just wanted to add a little bit of extra oomph because I was thinking I'll go ahead and draw my dots around there now the short nails it's kind of hard because there wasn't a lot of space but I was able to still make it work you know so this just requires in your head you have to be able to think fast when you're doing a freestyle and don't be scared to try stuff because worse come to worse you'll be able to have time to kind of think on the fly I'm a person I feel like freestyles mean that I'm not looking at inspo pics I don't have anything pre-planned it's just in the moment when they come in I'm like okay what do I feel like doing kind of let my mood dictate it so I kind of cure them for actually no I did not cure them right I just started drawing now the mistake for that was the two middle fingers I tried to do it uncured and y'all the, the black and the white started running together so that's why I say it's a, it is important to cure just at least for a couple of seconds sometimes okay now also note this black and white is my favorite black and white polish ever um, this is probably the only black and white you will see me use because they're so pigmented and I absolutely love them and for basically for the dotting I am I'm sorry it cut off I'm finishing that letting it cure and then you have to top coat y'all now because of all the layers of polish when you do nail art you have to slightly reshape now notice how I am taking my file and reshaping but I'm not doing it so rough that I'm filing off all the polish which is why I say please please you have to top coat or you will get dust all over the nail art right and then you will rub off a lot of the paint now right here this is where we're gonna regain our shape 
and this is what's really going to make the set pop again you're going to be able to get out any polish the cuticle areas or any little mess ups and stuff like that any bulkiness you can get rid of because gel polish it does bulk up a little bit and we have at least like six layers of polish on this nail alone so you have to top coat after and then before we add the bling because we, it is on top of top coat i use nail glue so i'm already knowing i have to file off some top coat in the area where i want the bling you know and then we'll have the top coat again but that last time we top coat we are going to make sure that um we're wiping off the sides and stuff like that now on this thumb i did have to go back on the side and add a little bit of blue polish because it was so bulky on the side that i decided to file extra and unfortunately it went through and so that's an easy fix and i also go underneath this is where the sharpness comes from in your set people think it's just a tip no the underneath and the side walls that's also where you get a lot of your shape from and if that's dull or too thick like if this is too thick it's not gonna look properly shaped it's gonna look bulky and if the sidewalls right here are too thick, it's not going to look good either. So I'll go on the sides after I'm all done with all the nail art. Because any sides that are missing polish, you can easily get away with filing it away. So you can see I'm just pretty much filing off the top coat to where I need to put the bling. And I'm kind of looking like making my choice like, do I want a lot? Do I want a little bit? I was really kind of debating. And I ended up going with the simpler route. And she was pretty happy like for what she paid she was extremely happy and i was extremely happy and yeah honestly that's pretty much that's pretty much it for this part i just want to show you guys that i do reshape after doing a bunch of nail art like this I, you have to i'll be honest if, you, if you're noticing that after you do like hand painted stuff or nail art that the shape goes away don't feel bad because it's going to it's just nobody ever tells you or shows you how to reshape okay so of course i do it one more time because i don't want the c-curve to be so c-curved that it's that's all that peeks through and it can look uneven so this portion boom finished so as far as the bling i got these blue opal um bling <sighs> i don't know where i got these from you guys i have these in blue purple pink and orange i really like these i am a sucker for colored jewels um, especially for like opal type jewels and electric. So Swarovski used to have like their electric colors, which were like bright pinks, bright yellows, bright orange. You guys know what I'm talking about. Where like the actual, it would look like colored plastic. These are kind of like that, except for they have like a pearlescent look to them as well. So I really, really like using these. I hadn't been able to use them before and they've matched very, very nicely with the blue and this is pretty much the end of the set you guys after the bling that's it we're done we top coated hope you guys enjoyed this i really enjoy this type of look i thought maybe you guys would as well since spring is approaching in the next couple of weeks maybe give you guys some ideas on different types of sets that we don't normally see this too often i mean maybe you might see it on instagram here and there but yeah my clients walk around in real life with this so once again hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always i will see you guys in the next one